You can wrap the surface of a 3D object with a kind of a graphic image called a texture. And a texture is actually composed of four separate components called shaders. Each shader contributes a specific feature to the texture. The four shader types are color, reflectivity, transparency, and bump. And we'll talk about these in a minute. A texture can contain one shader type or all four of them. And when you create a texture, it's better to first decide on the features that that texture needs to have, such as color, shininess, or surface roughness, and then choose the shader types that provide those exact features. Here's the basic process for creating a new texture. Step one is to create or edit textures via the resource manager. And uh, we can see here we'll select the resource manager and then click on the resource manager's resource type drop down box at the top center and now select RenderWorks Textures. Once we've selected RenderWorks Textures we can right click in the resource viewer pane here in the middle and then select new RenderWorks Texture in the file that we're working in. And as soon as we do that the edit texture dialog box opens and it displays the different shader types on the left side. And This is the primary window that we'll be working in as we create a new texture. The next step is to select one of the shaders. So click on the drop down box under a shader type such as color and then choose a shader. The preview window up here will display the shader and if you select the first shader type image you you will be prompted to search for an image file somewhere on your computer and if you select the next shader type color you'll see the white default color for this type but all of these can be adjusted. The third step is to adjust the settings for the shader. So now that you've selected a shader, click on the Edit button to the right of the Selected Shader Types drop-down box. That's the Edit button. And a dialog box opens, which displays all the adjustable settings and sometimes patterns that are specific or particular to the shader that you've selected. Now to see the detailed descriptions of all of these settings, just search help for a specific shader, for example bricks, and there's a detailed review of all the different settings. The next and final step is to adjust the texture's size. So once you've selected the shaders that you want to use and you've adjusted their settings, just make sure to adjust the size of the texture in the size setting box down here on the lower left side. And also it's a good idea to adjust the size, the object size, in the preview options area because this will make it easier to understand the nature of the texture when it is seen in the preview window. It's, it won't be too small or too big. Now the size of a texture, and especially one containing noise shaders, can really have a drastic impact on its appearance. So make sure you pay attention to this item. So let's just run through the different types of shaders and we'll run through them one by one in order. So the first one is color and the shaders in the color shader type control a texture's basic appearance. We can choose from the object's own color which is object attribute. We can import an image that we can use as a texture. We can assign a selected color we can assign a color combo containing one color in the center of an object and transitioning to a different color at the edges. That's the Fresnel selection. And we can select any of the remaining shaders in the color shader type list in order to include patterns or images in the texture. And you can see all of them here. The next shader type is reflectivity. And this shader family makes a texture shiny or reflective. We can import an image to be used as the reflection source, or we can choose from a number of different shaders that can only be found in this shader family. For example, backlit helps a surface glow when it's illuminated from the rear, as in frosted glass. Glass adds a glass type reflection with colors that you can select at the center and edges of the object, and you can also adjust the percentage of blur in the displayed reflection, among other adjustments. Glow is a light emitting shader that can be used as a soft diffused light source in a scene. For example, it's very common to use this 
in cove lighting or fluorescent fixtures or light shades. And metallic, mirror, and plastic, all of these have reflectivity features that really are quite specific to those materials. Now the reflectivity family also includes bricks, noise, pavement, and tiles, and all of these are shaders that apply patterns or shapes to a texture. And in this case, each of these shaders causes those patterns, or portions of them, to be reflective. So it's a good idea to experiment with the settings for each of these shaders, since some elements in these shaders provide reflection and other elements do not. And one hint you can see is often uh, the color black does provide a reflection, whereas white does not. So it's worth, worth playing with these. The next one is transparency. And this shader type helps to make textures transparent, either fully transparent or partially transparent. And when you apply a texture containing a transparency shader to a three-dimensional object, the object itself appears transparent, more or less, depending on the shader settings. The image mask shader lets you choose an imported image and then make specific colors within that image transparent. For example, you can use that to remove the backgrounds from images of people. That's one very popular use for this one. The image shader uses an imported graphic image and makes the entirety of it partially transparent, for example, as in a stained glass window. Color will apply a selected color tint to the texture and make it partially transparent, as in tinted glass. Glass provides transparency settings that help simulate the material glass. Plain transparency makes a texture fully or partially transparent in a very simple way with very easy adjustments. Rectangular mask helps to create a rectangular transparent area surrounding an image-based texture, which is useful with decals. Decals are textures that are superimposed upon other textures, and we'll talk about this later in the book. And then there's bricks, noise, pavement, and tiles, and these create patterns or shapes that are partially transparent, and they can be adjustable in varying amounts. And now we come to the bump shader family. Bump shaders create the appearance of three-dimensional surface features, such as valleys and hills or dimples. Uh, for example, we're using an image in this chapter that displays an object that has a wood texture applied, and you can see that the wood texture uh, has uh, appears to have a raised wood grain. Well, that raised wood grain is a result of using a bump shader in the texture, and the bump shader itself is based on an imported wood image. See, it has a three-dimensional appearance, even though the object itself does not have this grain in the actual object. It's just in the image. Now, you can import an image and use that as the source for a bump shader, but you can also select and adjust the bricks, noise, pavement, and tile shaders to create from within the program, without using an outside image, patterns or shapes that will provide a three-dimensional surface effect when they are rendered. So let's recap. The thing to remember is this. A texture is composed of one shader or, or of several shaders. The four shader types are color, reflectivity, transparency, and bump. Each of these shader types contributes a very specific feature to the texture. Now the texture can contain a single shader type or all four, and when you create a texture, it's best to decide in the beginning what features you would like in that texture, such as color or shininess or surface roughness, and then choose the shader types that will provide those specific features.